G'day, fellas, and welcome to your first look at Malta. That is correct. We are jumping in. The Maltese are now available. I say now available. This video might be uploaded a little bit before they're available, but this is a brand new DLC coming to Age of Empires 3. And how damn exciting. It looks very similar to the Ottoman home city. Obviously, these guys are pretty close to each other geographically. But let's jump in. Let's take a little bit of a look at exactly what it is that we're dealing with. Now, something that we didn't do in the Italian overview and something that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look at what the actual special units are for the Maltese before we get into their cards. Because obviously, this video, we're talking about everything unique about the cards for the Maltese. It's important that we understand what they've actually got. So we can see the Maltese units gain additional hit points with each shipment and they heal over time when idle uh, their royal guard units are the crossbowmen uh, which become arbalisters and uh, the culverin which uh, become basilisks very interesting to have royal guard artillery something i think this might be the first time we're seeing this maybe yeah i think this might be the first time we're seeing it uh, they've also got some unique units including the sentinel the hospitaler the grandmaster and the fire thrower uh, unique buildings include the hospital the fixed gun the depot and the commandary uh, so it says that one of the Mediterranean's epitomes of a melting pot, Malta was strategically and financially important, and thus most of the surrounding powers coveted it, becoming a stronghold of the Knights Hospitaler. So let's jump in. Without further ado, we'll take a look at some of the cosmetics that are going to be available to you. You can see we've got some beautiful cosmetics already for our uh, for our explorer. He's got some pretty dank little chains. At least it looks like a chain. I don't know if it's a chain. Actually, you know what? That's totally a chain. What what a gangster. Uh, we've got other... Uh, you can see other uh, other skins that you can get access to. This one here is... Oh my lord. Is, that's Captain Morgan. Dude, from the campaign. Wait, this guy's from the campaign as well. Damn, dude. Look at that. Uh, and then, of course, we've got more customizations available for your home city. Uh, and uh, there are some... There's night mode. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have access to that because uh, we haven't unlocked any of those just yet because we don't have any available points. But a whole bunch of different upgrades that you can get or a bunch of cosmetics. But without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at what is available to you when you are building your Maltese deck. That is right. We have got a brand new deck. So they do have access to three villages. They've also got access to distributivism, which is the, the card that the Rush, the Russians get. So that's a great card there. But we've also got Camelite Churches. Ships two church wagons, allowing you to establish additional churches in your towns. Now, I'm assuming that this is basically the same church as like that you would normally get. And you might look at that and be like, eh, that's not that cool. Well, hold on a minute. It's a church which gives you a trickle of XP. So it's basically like a very, very form of like a safe trading post and it's double church as well. So you you also get XP when the church is uh, is built. So that's always going to be something to consider. Uh, we've also got Merchant Republics, which is a card that's available to both the Italians as well as the Maltese, uh, which is going to ship a trading post wagon and grant resources for both future and past deliveries. I do love that. I really do like the fact that it grants it for past deliveries as well. Uh, we've also got this card here, Baraka Gardens. Arrives fast. All your current food is exchanged for an equal amount of wood. So all you treaty players can be very happy with this one, uh, B Baraka Gardens. But obviously it is, uh, it is an equal amount of wood, not a greater amount. Uh, they've also got access to just your standard 300 shipments. And then we've got this one, Team Knights of the Round Table. The Knights of the Round Table ship one Hospitaler to each team member for each town center they have on the map. Also grants plus 2% hit points to all units on your team, unlike your other team cards. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. We've got our Bailiff, uh, which improves the Grandmaster in combat, enables him to boost nearby building construction speed, and gives him a powerful K-Prine companion. So that is not a canine, that is a caprine. It's a heroic sheep scout that cannot attack. Delivers one lamb of the Lord. Hey, 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 get in here. You know we've got to be including that card. Uh, we do have pioneers here, so no unique villager card there. Uh, but we do get advanced commandaries. Uh, commandaries are built faster and may deploy units more often. Sounds a little bit like a dojo deploying units more often. We'll have to check that one out and see exactly what it is. Uh, we've also got another unique card down here, which is Greek Fire. Enables docks to construct fire ships. Explosive vessels slowed, or stowed rather, with Greek Fire. A secret incendiary mixture, which infli inflicts considerable damage upon contact. We'll have to check that one out. And also, we've got Speronoras, uh, which improves the movement speed of all of your fishing ships, especially order galleys and fishing boats. So you can see that they're up by 20%, so quite a big uh, boost there to, uh, to fishing movement speed as well as just normal ships. We'll take a look at what we've got in the Commerce Age, because that's pretty much rounding out the Exploration Age. And we've got some interesting new cards. We've got 
Wigner Court construction. So settle, settlers gather nearby resources, na, sorry, natural resources significantly faster when nearby a town center or outpost. This is interesting. So obviously it doesn't really scale the entire game unless you've got like farms or plantations, like your, your typical mill plantation sort of thing. I guess it depends though. It depends. I like the sound of it though. I'm curious to see. It's It says significantly faster. So th this could be pretty big. We've also got German tongue, 250 wood, the cost is. Ships a commandary wagon and a number of settler wagons. Uh, enables commandaries to recruit them. Oh my god, dude. Hell yeah, sign me up, brother. It's a four villager card. It's actually a four villager shipment. So this seems like it's pretty decent. 250 wood, so it's your first card. It's expensive, uh, but it also allows them to be collected from the commandary that that sounds interesting i'm looking for the maltese is definitely feeling like like my sieve i know that the you know the, the the meme of italian drongo is a very real one uh but i i'm so far you know I, you know me I'm, I'm a boomer i love to boom what else have we got in here we've got trip to jerusalem returns 10 wood and 10 coin for each unit you have lost so far this game up to a maximum of 1500 resources i'm assuming that it tells you how many how many resources you're going to get when you do ship it so as an example if you're thinking of playing like a really long age two trip to jerusalem makes sense because you can leave this card in your deck and all of a sudden it can give you quite literally 750 wood 750 gold in in the back pocket it's 10 for each unit you've lost so far this game so if you somehow manage to trade out 150 units in the second age congratulations you played yourself well not really you played the enemy because now you've got 1500 resources in the bank that's pretty decent we've also got our burgers our burgers it's it sounds like alf burger I, I don't know what the settler wagons say, but they say something. Commandaries gain additional hit points and now also support population. Uh, so it, it seems like something that you're probably not going to be using a lot of, but I don't know exactly the role that commandaries play. Uh, so this is something that we're going to have to think about. We've also got Knights of Bodrum. The Knights of Bodrum ship one Hospitaler for each outpost you have on the map. Uh, and uh, it, it seems like, I mean, maybe this is a civilization that's very much based around outpost about turtling. Uh, so could we see some Maltese turtles coming out? We could potentially. We've also got British Tongue. Ships a commandary, a commandary wagon and a number of powerful order longbowmen enables commandaries to recruit them. So you can't train longbows, but you can recruit them uh, to your... Uh, or fr from your commandaries. So I, as I said, I think it's like the dojo for the Japanese. That's how I would imagine it because they, they say like recruiting, training, that sort of thing. Uh, and, and we have eight Hanover allies. Now, one of the things to note is that we have got brand new natives or minor civilizations. They're called natives, right? Like, because you, you think like Native Americans, you know, all that that sort of thing, like the Haudenosaunee and, and, and all of those before they became the major civs. Uh, but we have here, you know, Irish brigaders. You've got here Hanover allies, Fana allies. So the, these guys are from your minor uh, factions or minor civilizations in Age of Empires 3, which are the brand new ones that have been thrown in here. We've also got the unique church card, Papal Bull. We've also got flamethrowers equipped flamethrower equips fire throwers with a flamethrower a powerful charge attack that inflicts considerable burning damage in close range combat well you know we can't be playing without that they've also got plus one or plus one <laughs> they've also got uh 15 attack uh for archaic soldiers and obviously their uh crossbowmen are their um are their royal guard unit so it makes a lot of sense to be taking this uh they've also got archaic sol soldier hit points so i can definitely see like a, a, a an age two play is definitely going to be the style that they go for here moves the arsenal arsenal to the commerce age and enables more powerful arsenal improvements so you're getting all those original ones uh obviously you get advanced arsenal here as well uh, and then we've got uh, fort construction enables forts to be constructed by your grandmaster and sentinels in any age increases fort build limit oh baby you know, you know we're doing a fort rush. In Age of Empires 3, it's so different, isn't it? Because there's that build limit, like the restriction around the town center. So you can't actually drop a fort in someone's face. Oh, man. That, that, <laughs> I do like it, though. Wall guns. Wall imp walls improve the attack and range of nearby sentinels. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, and we've also got gunpowder mills. So many unique cards for, for the uh, Maltese. This is crazy. You receive a free gunpowder depot wagon with all your shipments, starting with this one. Uh, depots boost gunpowder attack speed and explode if destroyed, damaging all units. Uh, I like the, the fact that they're in caps. Gunpowder mills. I think we gotta we got to check that one out. we got to test that one out. What else do we have that's unique in here? We've also got Corso Galleys. Ships one order galley. Improves order galley attack and hit points. And then that's pretty much it. So... 
that that is that is it and uh, oh, you can get two order galleys in age two they must be strong though armored but fast galley good at exploring fishing and transport gains an attack boost after sinking enemy ships there you go the fact that you've got to pay for them means that they're good so and does that mean that they take longer to send kind of like the privateers if that's the case that kind of sucks uh but uh, they might have a very strong age two water Let's take a look at their Castle Age cards or their Fortress Age. Apologies. You guys know me. I've been playing too much Age of Empires 4. Let's have a look and see what their Fortress Age cards are. We have got Vitoriosa, uh, which enables you to construct an additional town center and make settlers significantly cheaper to train. Mmm. I like this a lot. I like, I like, I like. Okay, so obviously settlers costing 100 food. It's a fair bit, right? So... What if they just reduce the cost of them? Now all of a sudden you're not you're not sinking as much into f like you might look at this and think yeah this is this is like a, a massive booming card. No, it, it doesn't increase the speed that you train settlers. I mean it gives you an extra town center slot, but are you really going to be going from three to four town centers? I think there's like only one sieve that really does that, the Ottoman, uh, with with the build, the famous the build. Um, so are you really going to be using that extra town center slot? Probably not. Uh, but you're definitely that that fifty percent food cost. Basically, it means that you're going to be able to guarantee a hundred percent food or a hundred percent settler train time all the time. But you're going to be able to spend that extra food on your military. So that's how I think about it. it, it it's not necessarily a card that's going to buff your economy, but rather going to support your military and guarantee your economy. That's the way I think about it. <clears throat> All right, let's jump in and have a look at the next one. So we've got uh, Spanish Tongue, ships a commandary wagon, and a number of powerful order lances. Uh, so it gives you the Garachista, and then you've got Portuguese Tongue, which gives you the Casador. I love this. I love the, the different, like, plays that they've got here. They don't seem to have a Dragoon. Do they have? A, do they actually have Dragoons? I, d I don't know about this Civ. You would think that they would. Uh, we've got Knights of Rhodes. The Knights of Rhodes ship three Hospitalers for each commandery you have on the map. That seems pretty good, because Commandery is like, I don't know, I, I definitely feel like it's a play style that you can go heavily into uh, to, to supplement your army. Uh, and we see 12 crossbowmen, nice little shipment in age 3, 12 spearmen, very similar to the Spanish. Uh, and then we've got 8 sentinels, defensive musketeer that may construct outposts stronger near buildings, especially fortifications. So you can definitely see it's a civilization that's very much a totally boom-focused civilization. I, I really do feel the Maltese calling to me. This excites me greatly. And then we've got Hospitalis, a knight of Malta armed with a great sword. Absorbs some of the damage inflicted to nearby allies. Faster near buildings. There you go, once again. And then, of course, we have the Fire Throwers, uh, light infantry that attacks with incendiary weapons, which inflict burning damage. Counters heavy infantry and light cavalry. So that's your skirmisher. Um, but interestingly, no Dragoons or no Dragoon shipments, at least. They, I'm assuming that they've got access to the Dragoons. Uh, they do have what appears to be the Black Rider. No, that is not. That is, the, that is Armored Pistoleras. Uh, but we've also got a fixed gun wagon. Constructs a fixed gun, powerful stationary artillery, which costs population. You know, we've got to check that out. Infinite Falconet card. We've got uh, Pandours. That's a notorious skirmisher from the Balkans. Uh, giant Grenadiers, you know, we're going to be a heavy ranged infantry mercenary that inflicts area with its ranged attack. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, and then we've got this card, which I re recognize, Steel Bolts, uh, which is going to be a mandatory card for you if you're playing as the Maltese, just because it's going to be helping you out so much. Uh, against heavy infantry, it's going to give you an extra 0.75 uh, against them. Uh, it's also going to give you an extra bit of range, an extra bit of line of sight, uh, and enables you to actually siege with your crossbows from range, and that's what I really do like. Um, in addition to that, we also see Archaic Soldier Combat. So they can get all three of their, their plus 15% uh, cards. Uh, and then we've got another one, which increases their... Uh, is, hold on. Uh, okay, I was going to say. Hold on a minute. We've got another combat card in H3 for these guys. Damn, they get some powerful units. Unique Maltese Infantry Attack and Hit Point Increased. So that's the Sentinel. That's the Hospitaler. That is the Fire Thrower. And then also they've got Squires. Military buildings work faster, especially forts. So we've got Fort, which increases the training and research work rate by 230 percent training and research work rate uh, for military buildings increases by 70 percent so some interesting numbers there uh, i'm sure they've done their math we've also got uh Duredin towers which ships two outpost wagons and enables outposts to train maltese infantry oh man you really see where they're going with this like it's the whole concept is that you are just relying so heavily on forts and military and you know, maybe you do. Go, maybe you do get a fourth town center out here. Like it, it really reminds me of just a, a very turtle heavy build. Like this is going to be a turtle as wet dream right here. Like genuinely, this sieve seems amazing for turtling. The question is how strong their late game is going to be. That is the question. 
We've also got fire towers. Researchers frontier, <laughs> frontier outposts and enables an additional powerful short-ranged fire attack. I love all this fire. And then we've got Zebex of the order. It ships a powerful Zebek. Transforms all your your frigates into Zebex. That seems pretty cool. That seems pretty damn cool. And uh, do we go over this one? Squires? Yeah, we went over that one. So some very interesting, unique cards there. And now we go into the industrial age. What do we have here? We have got shipping supplies. Ships cords of 2,000 woods for the first time you send it and then ships 1,000 thereafter. Wow. What a card. What an absolute card. Can you imagine that one for treaty? Hmm. Those treaty guys are going to love that one. We've also got French tongue. Ships a commandary wagon and a number of powerful cuirassiers. Oh my god, of course they get access to the gendarme. Of course. And they also get access to the Opronix with the Russian tongue. I love it. I absolutely love it. This is so cool. They get gendarmes. Oh my god, of course they get gendarmes. Oh gosh. But remember, they're, they're not going to be able to train the gendarmes. They are uh, recruited through the commandary. So, you know, in, in treaty, obviously, you're going to be going ham with that. But in in, in your main game, I don't know how, how viable that's going to be as an option. Uh, we also see two fixed wagon guns going to be coming through here. Um, and uh, realistically, there's not much else in the Imperial Age. We can see that they've got uh, access to one little Bombard, three Omedi, and four Zuave, and 25 Royal Guard Bourbons. Uh, but they've got rockets, equips your fire throwers with rockets in addition to their other weapons. These guys just get everything, don't they? They are throwing out everything right now, uh, which is going to be just... And th they have significantly more range as well. Okay, there you go. Uh, digni dignitaries, or dignitaries rather, bestowed with high awards, hospitalers are granted access to additional ranged armor and a charged pistol attack, of course. And then uh, we've got flint <laughs> flintlock rockets. Grant your sentinels a powerful charge rocket launcher attack. Oh my God, everybody's getting rockets. You get a rocket, you get a rocket. Everybody gets a rocket. Uh, it increases... Oh my lord, look at that. It increases their combat stat, but also makes them more expensive. They get 50% more health, 50% more damage, 50% more cost, and 50% more bounty, though. I love this. Th this reminds me of the old hand army from the Chinese. Oh, this is really, really good. These these guys are going to be broken in late game. Like, unironically. I'm, you're going to get to industrial with 35 sentinels. Which one are the sentinels? Hold on. These guys. Defensive musketeer that may construct outposts stronger near buildings. Yeah. So you might get like a age three with... Or you, you'll go age four with like 40 sentinels and then just ship this card immediately. It's basically like getting an imperial upgrade. Like un unironically, that is an imperial upgrade that you're getting for free. That's going to get nerfed. That is definitely going to get nerfed. <laughs> you're gonna have to pay you're gonna have to pay like uh, two thousand wood mark my words there's no way that stays <laughs> that is that definitely slipped under the radar uh th that is gonna get uh, changed to uh uh two two thousand wood i'm calling that no no maybe not two thousand wood maybe like a thousand wood a thousand food it'll be something like that uh <laughs> that's a very strong card okay uh what else are we i i'm totally abusing that flint ro flintlock rockets let's go baby uh and then we've also got knights of malta the knights of malta ship five hospitalers for each fort you have on the map Morgan's flagship ships a mighty battleship. Idle battleships heal considerably faster. Of course, you also get the one infinite battleship card. And they only get one factory wagon. And we've got Sicilian supply. It grants a, a steady trickle of food. Villagers gather food faster from mills. Very nice late game uh, economic card there. Well, there you guys go. That is your look at some of the... Uh, well, not some of, rather the unique cards for the Maltese. Do you have any favorites? Let me know down in the comments below what you think. For me, it, you guys will obviously know my favorite. Uh, as there's no pizza in this deck, I'm going to have to go with this large red rocket, the Flintlock Rockets. This card is going to be broken as hell. I can't wait to use it. Uh, but uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this first look at the Maltese and all the cards that they've got access to because I tell you what, it's it's pretty exciting to see Age of Empires 3 getting this much love. I have not... I can't believe... Uh, the fact that, that we're seeing this much stuff coming out for them. But uh, anyways, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys very much for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed.